Happy New Year guys! Welcome to the second Sunday of January. I'm so excited but I, I don't know about you. I don't know where you're at with this year. There are people who are just like, you know what? We're just excited that 2020 is over. And then there are people who are just like, eh, let's just wait and see how this goes. We're not about to dream. We're not about to plan for anything. Let's just see. Last year we dreamt big. We went all out. We're like, you know what guys? 2020, double vision, everything, double, double. And then life happened so i don't know where you're at but for me i think i'm just excited about this year and that's because my 2020 was actually amazing i'm not i'm not trying to say i'm bragging in any way but i'm just like there's something about starting the year with god that changes everything so let me take us back to 2019 so 2019 at the end of the year at myf hill city we just sat down and we're just like ah, this church thing don't get me wrong, we love church, we have so much fun, we come, we hang out, we play pool, we have amazing sermons from cool pastors, you know, like the usual. But we got to a point and we're just like, is this all church is supposed to be or is there something more? So for us, we decided, you know what, we want to experience God in a different way. We want to get more out of our Christianity. We don't just want to come and hang out and listen to preachings and then life moves on. So we decided for 2020, we're going to focus on seeking God. And our verse for the year was Matthew 6.33. And it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these other things will be added to you as well. Because we realize that you've been in church all these years, you're still struggling with the same things. So either the Bible is not true or it is something that we hadn't understood yet. So we started the year with a bang. It was so extra. We're just like this year, guys, devotions. Every day we're doing devotions. So guys signed up. We're like, yeah, we're gonna do, we're gonna, we're gonna be studying verses every day. We're gonna be doing fasting every every Tuesday of, of the year. We're gonna have prayers. Like there are so many things we committed to, and we're just like, we just want to experience God on a new level. And then Corona happened. <laughs> As we talked about, as Pastor Zuse shared last week, when we started, it was okay because Corona was in other parts of the world. It was not an African problem. And then March comes and then we're like, oh, okay, so it's come to Africa. And then churches shut down. We've never shut down church, ever. Like from the beginning of church, churches have never been shut down. So guys were thrown into this disarray. You don't know what to do. You don't know where to start. Everything is chaotic. But I realized that for the guys who had committed to beginning the year with God, the guys who had committed to doing devotions with, the guys who had committed to, to praying, to fasting and all these different things, how we handled 2020 was completely different from everyone else. And so when other people are talking about how things are falling apart, we have things to be grateful for. We have things to celebrate. And we're just like, if it was not for God, we would not have been here. So we're in a new year and I can't, I don't think anybody knows what 2021 holds, but we do know somebody who does. So this month, we're inviting you to come and take this journey with us. Start the year with God, because things get unpredictable, yes. But there's one thing that seeking God does. It equips you for the things that are ahead of you. So let me just read a couple of scriptures. So um, this is Mark 9. So in Mark 9, this comes just after the transfiguration. So Jesus takes his disciples, Matthew. Did I just say Matthew? <laughs> I was naming the books of the Bible. He takes Peter, James, and John. And they go up the mountain and there's this insane experience. And they see Jesus in a different light in all his glory and everything. And it was just crazy. And then they come back down to reality. Some of us can relate. When you're with God, you're at a different time. And then come back to life and this is where we find this story so this is mark chapter 9 verse 14 to 29 and it says when they came to the other disciples they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law arguing with them as soon as all the people saw jesus they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him what are you arguing with them about he asked a man in the crowd answered teacher i brought you my son who was possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of his speech. 
Whenever he, it seizes him, he throws himself to the ground. He forms at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. You unbelieving generation, Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around. Jesus asked the boy's father, How long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into fire or water, wanting to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, said Jesus. Everything is possible for one who believes. And immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe but help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw the crowd uh, was running into a scene, he rebuked the impure spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that they said he's died. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet and he stood up. After Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, this kind only comes out by prayer and fasting. Now, this is a very interesting story. Um, it's, there's a lot of drama. This kid has been possessed by a demon and it makes him do some pretty weird things. But that's not the point of what I want us to pick today. The point of uh, the direction that I want us to go today is the answer that Jesus gave his disciples as to why they couldn't sort out this impossible situation. And Jesus said, this kind only comes out by prayer and fasting. So what does that mean? I know for us many times when you hear about prayer and fasting, you think of suffering, you think of hunger strike, you think of, I don't know what comes to your mind. For me, for the longest time, I used to associate fasting with with suffering and for people who love food it just feels like God is torturing you that's how I used to think about it but later I got to understand what fasting actually does so let me share three thoughts one fasting is not a hunger strike it's not you throwing a tantrum and deciding you know what I won't eat until my needs are, my needs are met <laughs> that's not what what uh, fasting is the second thing is that Fasting is not coercing God into doing what you want. There are people who go on, on a fast and they're just like, I need God to do this for me, I need God to do this for me. And I'm just like, fasting is not coercing God to do it. You can decide not to eat for the rest of your life and that won't force God to move the way you want him to move. And then the third thing is that fasting is more about the state of your heart than the situation around you. So, why is it that we're talking about fasting? This month at Mavuno, we're doing a corporate fast. And basically what we're trying to say is that none of us know what 2021 holds, but we want to call you into a space of let's start the year right. See, there I've talked about last year and how we started by seeking God. This year I want to do the same thing. And we're saying that it doesn't matter what comes in 2021, but as long as we've started on a note of seeking God, then he'll be the one to order our steps. He'll be the one to direct how we move forward. So let me, let me talk a bit about fasting. Why do we fast? So the first reason why we fast is that physical actions release spiritual consequences. Going back to this story of Jesus, we see how when he answered his disciples, he said, this spirit does not come out unless by prayer and fasting. One of the things we notice about his disciples is earlier in the book of Mark, they are questioned about why they don't fast. So the disciples of John come and tell Jesus, you know, we fast, the Pharisees fast, how come your disciples don't fast? And Jesus answers them by saying, you know, when the bridegroom is there, there's no need for fasting, but a time will come when they'll need to fast. So at this point, the disciples didn't have need to fast because they had Jesus. He was there. He was the one doing the things. He was, he was God in the flesh. So if they needed direction, he'd tell them what to do. If they needed healing, he was there to perform the healing. If it's situations like this where there are demons involved, then he had authority to do that. So they never really had to fast. But later we find them in the book of Acts. And before the disciples made any decision, they came into a place of prayer and fasting. Because one of the things that prayer does 
prayer and fasting does is that the physical action of fasting has spiritual consequences. The second thing is that it gives us divine wisdom and direction. The reason we fast against is not so that God does what you want. The reason we fast is so that we get divine wisdom and direction. It's so that instead of going left, which made sense in our, in our understanding, we go right because that's the direction that God leads us to. It's a space of quieting your thoughts. It's a space of focusing your attention. Instead of focusing on food, personally, that's one of the issues I have. Uh, my mom is always making fun of me because she, she says how as I'm eating one meal now, I'm thinking about what I'll eat for the next one. <laughs> That's not entirely true. <laughs> but the point is that energy and, and, and time that I'm spending to think about what to cook or what to eat, I spend that time instead focusing my mind, my heart, my emotions on God. And that way I'm able to get wisdom, I'm able to get um, direction on what it is that I should do. And then the third thing is that there are things in your life that just don't move because you're a Christian. I think that's the one that we don't understand. You assume that because you're a Christian, everything should go right. Just because you come to church, your, line, your life should align. But there's a level that you get to with God that comes through prayer and fasting. When you deny yourself something because you're so focused on hearing God's voice, when you focus on um, what God has to say about a situation instead of what you think about it, then something amazing comes out of it. So I don't know what you're hearing as I'm talking. I, I think I've said a, a lot of things, but the point of this was to invite you guys to join us this month as we go through a space of prayer and fasting, as we seek God for 2021. For sure, we don't know what will come with this year. We don't know whether um, the world will go back to normal. We don't know whether we're gonna go into another lockdown. We don't know. We really don't know. There's so many things that we can plan for and hope for, but we really don't know. So why not spend time in the presence of the person who holds time, the person who has been through 2021 and knows what it looks like. I promise you that time spent in God's presence is not a waste. You find that you have wisdom and understanding beyond everybody around you. You find that in the midst of darkness, in the midst of chaos, you're able to handle situations better just because you spent time in God's presence. So as we internalize what, what it is that I've been saying, I want us to get into a time of reflection and just think about where you're at. Are you at the place where you're just like, bye 2020, thanks, it's been real, 2021, please. Don't be like 2020. Or are you at the place of, let's just see what happens. Or maybe you're at the place of, you know what? There's no point to this. Let's just, the fact that we're still living, let's just continue living. Let's not dream big. We don't want to be disappointed. We don't want to, to you know, plan for things and then they don't happen. I don't know what your space is at, but I just want to invite you into this place of inviting God into this year. As we start the year, would you come into a space where you're saying, God, I don't know how to do it, but I know that you're able to teach me. I don't even know where to start. I don't even know how to read my Bible, but I want to commit to this thing. I want to commit to prayer and fasting. I want to quiet the voices around me and just focus on you because I know in you is where I find direction. In you is where I find healing. In you is where I find wisdom for the year ahead. So just join us as we take time to reflect. You make us whole, oh God, you fill the emptiness within, you are home in times of despair, we boldly declare you Boldly did.
the God of wonders beyond our galaxy. Declares your majesty, your majesty, God, your majesty, God. Say your grace just found me just as I am, empty handed but alive in your hands. I'm singing, Majesty. Empty-handed but alive in your hands Singing majesty We're singing majesty Forever I am changed by your Singing majesty Forever we are changed by your love In the presence of your majesty your presence God and it's your presence that I seek right now God it's your presence that I seek right now I want to be in your presence as I start this year I want to give my my flesh to the spirit that my flesh will be controlled by my spirit not the other way around so I'm letting go of everything everything oh God that hinders me from spending time with you if you're listening to the sound of my voice just start declaring right now that everything that has been holding you back from getting closer to God from leading a life that is controlled by the spirit and not by the flesh you're giving it away I give myself away I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. Father, we want to be used by you this year of being used by the world we want to be used by you we say no to a mediocre life we say no to anything 
that will hinder us from being used by you. Heavenly Father, I just want to pray for the people out there that find it to be a struggle when it comes to giving their lives to you, God. When it comes to surrendering everything that they hold dear to their life, that is pulling them away from you, whether it's movies, whether it's something that they are addicted to, oh God. Whether it's even hanging out with different friends that draw them away from you, God. I pray that you will give them the strength and the grace right now to be able to step away. And as we go through this month of prayer and fasting, Lord, I pray that they will grow strong in their faith, in their belief, in their discipline, in doing things, Lord. That, Father, you will help them in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. I pray for the year ahead. That is going to be a good year for all of us. I pray that, Lord, even when the devil brings things our way, oh, Father God, what he meant for evil, you will make it for good. We trust and believe in your name as we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Cause all I am is all you are. Would you meet me here again? I'm not enough unless you come. Would you meet me here?